Hello, and welcome to the Providence College Magazine Show. I'm Matthew. And I'm Emily. On this episode, we'll be getting an update on what's going on in athletics. Yes, Eloise Dubois will be going over some changes that have been going on with the Big East and Providence's decision to leave that conference. Jess Torville will be giving us a special review of the inauguration of President Obama. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse will be telling us what we can do to fix Congress, and there's a new episode of Resident Awesome this week. Will Charlie and Jess be able to make their monthly citation quota? We'll find out. But first, to sports. Hi, this is Eloise Dubois for PCTV News. Today, we will be talking about Providence College's decision to leave the Big East and enter a different conference with the seven other Catholic schools. We will interview Providence College students about their opinions on the change. I know we're a member of the Big East, about 15 teams, pretty competitive in basketball. Um, I know the Big East is kind of dissolving right now, and uh, we're making the Catholic seven. I know one of the major events that's been uh, talked about amongst our Providence College athletics has been the um, change in moving from the Big East and transitioning into a whole new conference with schools such as Georgetown, Villanova, Seton Hall, DePaul, Marquette. Obviously the Big East has been the best of the best, um, but recently with all of the, um, like Louisville, Notre Dame, Syracuse, Pittsburgh leaving, um, taking the best teams of the, con of the conference is going to hurt you. Um, so we kind of had to come up with the decision of whether to stay in the Big East or basically maybe form this new, division, new conference. While some students believe that the change will be beneficial to Providence College, other students are sad to say goodbye to the other schools that have been rivalries for so many years. I think it'll be good, good basketball conference. So I think that matching a place like Providence with schools smaller in size and also not state affiliated brings um, a more of an advantage. It gives Providence a fair game compared to the other schools. I think we made the best decision by making this Catholic seven, um, simply because the seven Catholic schools that are with us and the six Catholic schools that are with us, um, I think that makes that conference legit. And with adding teams like they're saying Gonzaga or Butler, um, that's gonna not only make the conference even, it's gonna make the conference even more elite. It's gonna be a, such a great conference, but when you're on top of that conference, it looks great for you and looks great for the school. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, just because I enjoy the rivalries with colleges that I know more well, like Marquette being from the Midwest. I feel like I can connect better with my home and my friends who are scattered across the country at our colleges. It's fun to have a little bit of rivalry with more better known schools. However, it is certain that no matter what conference Providence College will be a part of, our students will be huge Friar fans. This is Eloise Dubois for PCTV News, signing out. Go Friars! Well, I hope that this change in conferences will be a good fit for both the team and the school. Yes, I think the change will elevate the level of excitement both on campus and on the court. Now we turn to Jess Torville covering the 2013 presidential inauguration. Hello everyone, this is Jessica Torvo reporting for PCTV News. President Obama's second inauguration was just held on January 21st and it was definitely one for the books. His speech contained topics that no other president has dared to touch upon before. Obama's speech emphasized the need to, to come together as a nation. He said, our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. This point was further driven home when Richard Blanco, an openly gay poet, presented his poem, One Today, describing today's America. Aside from the political components, the celebrities' performances and even the fashion contribute to the wide publicity the event receives. Kelly Clarkson and James Taylor were just two of the singers at the inauguration, but their performances did not cause as much debate or excitement as Beyonce Knowles' closing performance of the national anthem. The inaugural ball finished off the weekend in a fun, casual way. 35,000 people were in attendance, but many interviewed by USA Today claimed that it was a much less formal event than they were expecting. With performances by the band Fun, Stevie Wonder, and Alicia Keys, everyone was able to let loose and enjoy the night, even the president. He shared the first dance with his wife Michelle to a live performance by Jennifer Hudson. Michelle Obama shocked the house in a beautiful red Jason Wu dress. This is the same designer that she wore four years ago, and since then, business for Jason Wu has been through the roof. 
Until next time, this has been Jessica Toivo reporting for PC TV News. Thank you. Did you watch the inauguration? No, I, I didn't get the chance. Beyonce was there, and I love me some single ladies. Hey, do you like to sing? I love singing. In fact, I often sing at the open mic nights hosted by WDOM. And in our next segment, we'll have a club spotlight to show us just what WDOM is all about. Hello everyone, this week's club spotlight is on PC's very own radio station, WDOM. WDOM is a completely student-run radio station that has existed since 1949. The station is on air from 6 in the morning until the following morning at 2 a.m. Shows range from sports talk, indie music, rock and roll, hip-hop, and even a show that strictly plays the hits out of Broadway. But by far, the most popular shows play electric dance music. WDOM can be found here in the heart of Slavin, as you perhaps have heard the music blasting out of the studio as you have been walking by. The station can be found on your radios at 91.3 FM in all parts of Rhode Island and also in lower parts of Massachusetts. I caught up with some DJs and asked them about their WDOM experience. Let's check it out. I mean, there are a lot of things I like about it, but one of the big things is definitely the fact that I can broadcast uh, the music that I like. You know, I'm a big fan of hard rock and metal, and it's not a huge thing in Providence right now, so I'm kind of trying to get it you know, to where it is in other places and really get it out there and have people love it. Uh, I like WDOM because you, you can pretty much show people what you like, what kind of music you like. WDOM is not all about their music inside of the station as the club is heavily involved in campus events. The club holds many open mic nights throughout the year in McPhail's where any student can come display their musical skills. Some of the acts include singing your favorite piece or your own piece, playing the piano, or also coming up and saying a few jokes. The club also has their biggest event during the spring semester, and that is Stewart Stock. Stewart Stock features some local bands and plenty of free food. WDOM clearly stands out from the rest of PC's many clubs. But to rub it in, the club even sells these bright t-shirts that will clearly stand out if you wear them on camp. This is Angela Marciano reporting from the WDOM studios. Back to you. You were out and about last Friday at the event for Senator White House. How'd it go? Well, despite all of the hullabaloo the week leading up to the event, both the Senator and Father Shenley spoke really well at the event. In the past week, PC had the unique pleasure of hosting Senator Sheldon Whitehouse on our campus to discuss issues of effective congressional policies. While this guest speaker initially drew fire from such conservative laureates as the Cardinal Newman Association, Father Shanley, the president of Providence College, was quick to defend the school's motto of veritas, which means truth. He stated in a campus-wide email that he finds this debate to be, quote, good for the community. We're especially grateful to Senator Whitehouse for taking time out of his busy schedule to share his thoughts uh, with us tonight about what, what's happening in Congress going forward. I think whichever, the, whichever side of the aisle you're on, I don't think any of us can be happy with the level of functioning of Congress. And I think that's one of the systemic issues that we really uh, need to talk and think and argue about. Many students hold a vision of Veritas for Providence College that takes a more ecumenical approach, where speakers and functions held on campus cause us to more greatly scrutinize the truths we take for granted. This special visit from Senator Whitehouse is an example of this vision, as the senator is a Democrat and yet the event was sponsored by campus Republicans. Senator Whitehouse addressed the community about his vision for a cooperative Congress that is effective for the 21st century. President Shanley addressed the community about his vision for ideological contemplation and communication to seek a truth that lies, quote, somewhere in the middle. And so, what began as a guest lecture became an exercise in the pursuit of veritas from which we all have gained a great deal. That's great that we are able to have someone so deeply invested in politics come here and speak at PC. It was a truly fantastic event. People on both sides of the political spectrum, they all sat there and listened. And like I said in the video, we're all so grateful to Father Shanley for reinforcing the motto of veritas on this campus. I've had it with you two. Your residents are out of control. Your numbers are down. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? If you don't start cracking down on rule breakers, then I'm going to have to replace you. You have until the end of the week. It's okay. We'll get through this. All right. Well, we'll just have to
to crack down on our citations this month. Meet the quota. What's our quota? 25 citations. Okay, great. How many do we have? Two. Alright. That's not so great. We're just going to have to find 23 troublemakers in three days. We could never do that. They're way too sneaky. Rookie, sometimes, in order to uphold the law, you need to break the law. I have a plan. What do you mean? Oh, my lead. What is this? What is this? It's a can of beer. Damn right it's a can of beer. What was it doing in your backpack? It wasn't in my backpack. It was in your hand. Are you trying to pull the wool over my eyes, Chief? What? That's a citation. That's a citation. What? You're a booze hound. Can I get your ID? No. What do you mean, no? Hey! Hey! Have a nice day! New plan. Yeah, it's gonna be so fun. Everyone's gonna be there. I'm gonna get so drunk. I know, I can't wait. O M G. This is it, rookie. Our one shot. We'll patrol the halls tonight, find that pregame, red everyone up, and ruin everyone's night. Do you think you can do this? I know you can. I have faith in you. Kill the lights. Alright, let's split up. Keep your eyes peeled for danger. Let's dish out some justice. I can do this. Oh, I can go, right? Oh, hi, come in, Keg's in the back. nothing going on. I guess we scared him off. Well, I guess we'll, we'll get it next time. All right, bye. Yes, I'm in the zone. Is it two, three? Leave a good tip. I'm gonna blow all of my money and don't get pushed. I'm on the floor. to Resident Awesome. This episode was the best yet. True that. Well, this concludes this week's episode of Providence College Magazine. Join us next time and please look for us on the web at providence.edu slash pctv to catch up on all of the latest highlights, clips, and segments. This week, see the full interview of Dickie Simpkins and watch the latest clips of the men's hockey highlights. Goodbye, Friars. Goodbye. Thank you.